um, and as John prayed, God, that uh, we may prosper and be in health, uh, prosper in all things and be in health, just as our soul prospers. And Lord, I, we pray this, God, saying that, uh, Lord, may we prosper, may I prosper in all things. Uh, may we prosper in all things and be in health, even as our soul prospers. And Lord, we thank you that this is your plan and purpose. This is your will. This is your desire. And uh, Lord, we pray that you would teach us, Lord, and to to really do what it takes in order to keep our our mind, Lord, renewed and uh, our imagination sanctified, Lord, and the thoughts, Father God, um, focused on, Lord, the things of the Spirit and or things that are good and virtuous and right. Um, and Lord, that we will flourish in that area. We will thrive and prosper in that area, God. And may it affect all other areas of our lives, Father God. May it affect our health, Lord, in a positive manner. May it affect our, Lord, action, our speech and everything that is tied to tied to our soul prospering. Lord, let each area, of God, just receive life, Father God. Receive life, oh Mother God, uh, Father God. Lord, we just, I just pray that um, those things that are, God, um, Lord, really, uh, that, that we are, we seem to be really suffering and uh, we seem to be, uh, oh God, um, like uh, uh, things that are really struggling, Father God. And I just pray that we're not able to find out what it is. And, and Lord, we pray right now, Lord, even as our soul prospers. Lord, even as you cause, even as your word causes our soul to really thrive and prosper, even as we meditate on your word, God, I pray that, Lord, it will just cover and um, each and every other area tied to it as well, Lord. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory at this time, God. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. So, um, so this is uh, this is key. You know, um, for uh, our uh, all other areas of our lives, like can get really impacted as we've been looking at it uh, in a positive way or in a negative way, um, uh, as as our uh, soul is imp impacted. Right. So let's um, let's pick up from where we left off last class. Um, we were looking at um, we we're looking at spirit, soul, and body, and uh, the areas of our minds, and uh, we were looking at uh, what causes uh, life's problems, and we were linking that to the problems in the soul. And so, one of the things uh, being affected being uh, behaviors and choices. Right? And uh, when being our behavior is compulsive and addictive and so on, uh, we see that it is uh, well. Yes, it is related to the soul, right? Um, um, yeah, uh, just can you just give me one minute, please? Just one minute. Sorry, um, there was a door that kept banging. Uh, I had to shut it. Okay, uh, so uh, we were looking at uh, you know the problem areas that uh, um, which are behavior which is linked to the soul, and we were looking at some of those things like compulsive, addictive behavior, something that is impulsive, and everything related to our thoughts and uh, you know things that are no, not going right in that area. Right. Uh, and the second area which gets affected is our emotional well-being. Like if there is a problem in our thoughts, if there's a problem in what we are dwelling on, our emotional well-being gets affected. So there's a lot of fear, anxiety, you know, there's a lot of sadness, hopelessness, uh, a feeling of being victimized and being rejected. All that, uh, our emotional well-being also gets affected. Now, this, this obviously affects our daily functioning. Right, um, we might be able to function to a certain degree, but in some cases, when it comes to maybe ha uh, handling 
things that are you know pressure filled and uh, uh, maybe challenging situations and and so on um, we feel that we're not able to really you know do our best we we, we are pulled back uh, because of this our emotional well-being uh, is affected and therefore certain tasks we're not able to do uh, uh, to the fullest degree possible right and um, and it's also, uh, if there is a problem in the soul, it also reflects in our relational well-being. You know, relational, uh, being able to relate to people, right? relationships um, gets affected. Why? Because there could be, you know, we're not able to really um, maintain that relationship. Right? Um, there is uh, maybe anger. Maybe there's some kind of. Uh, uh, you know, some kind of uh, conflict that is happening and can conflict that we're not really able to resolve, right? This conflict and because of conflict, this alienation, you know, uh, withdrawal from that relationship, uh, not wanting to um, really make amends, not wanting to work at a relationship, right? Um, or it could even be in a relationship, it could even be, uh, you know, like a dominating uh, uh, very dominating, being manipulative, you know, all these negative things which are not really uh, conducive, helpful uh, in a relationship. And uh, when I'm saying relationship, we're not talking about you know just husband and wife. You know, uh, we're talking about all kinds of relationships. It could be business. It could be you know maybe you're a colleague and a boss. It could be you know peer. It could be friends. All uh, kinds of human interactions. Um, that we can think of you know, different degrees of relationship, like formal, informal, uh, close, um, you know, um, business, uh, etc. All these get affected when there is a problem in the soul realm, right? uh, which is not set right. Okay. Um, then also, uh, there are certain challenges in in life, what we can call as life experiences, like. Maybe there's failure. Maybe there's uh, inability to handle finances because of overspending, or um, you know, there's debt and uh, borrowing, and and uh, and also uh, infidelity, meaning that uh, you're not being faithful. Um, so all kinds of complexities that come with it, right? Um, which challenge or which are challenges in life itself, and. Uh, like we saw earlier, it affects our physical health, right? Physical health, the mind, what goes on in our mind affects our body, affects our emotions, affects relationships, affects uh, the way we work. Things. So we see it's a, it's it's all connected. It's interconnected, and uh, it's it's important. Um, the reason John is pray, praying that prayer uh, is that uh, you know there's a key that we get there that. Uh, that let it thrive, let it flourish, and let it affect all areas of our lives. You know, even Romans chapter twelve and verses one and two, when we see where Paul writes, you know, let your life be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Um, that when your thoughts are made new, when our you know our, what we are dwelling on, our imaginations, everything is renovated, then there is a change, and not just a. You know, not just a simple change, but it's a drastic change. And the word he uses there is metamorpho, right? Uh, from which we get metamorphosis, um, which is a change, uh, like uh, in science when we study, like it's change from uh, how a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. And uh, there's no recognition of, you know, the, the the beginning stage and the end stage. So there's a drastic transformation that happens. So that kind of a transformation can happen in our lives uh, for the better if this area is um, sorted you know is uh, the it is it is strengthened it is made new and right? renewed so it's very important uh, looking at a couple of uh, scriptures here you know how it talks about how the the you know the soul realm affects all other areas proverbs 15 and verse 13 says a merry heart makes a cheerful countenance but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken okay uh, proverbs 17 verse 22 a merry heart does good like medicine but a broken spirit dries the bones so the first 
verse talks about emotion uh, and talks about uh, you know our our mood our drive our motivation um the verse proverbs 17 and verse 22 talks about how physically also you know there is an impact like a merry heart does good like medicine but a broken spirit dries the bones literally you know there is no health there is no strength so that that happens okay so so it's a very important key that we that we get uh we understand this and uh, we realize that okay as a believer you know if we are struggling right if you are struggling in certain areas and if you are uh, if you are struggling then we realize that okay if this is something that i have not dealt with okay if this is an area that needs to be dealt with if i've been neglecting this area and i've been pushing for change i've been pushing for behavior modification right i've been trying to change our behavior and it's short lived then it comes back right uh, it is because that this area is untouched the, the realm of our thoughts um, you know where our thoughts go where our imaginations lie and what we dwell on constantly that has been there's been very little change probably um, so if there is change then they, it will definitely result in transformation right of behavior okay so let's look at uh, uh, some of the causes of these problems okay so we're going to be looking at a lot of negative things okay uh, so what causes the problems that we face uh, and obviously we we start off with the main thing which is wrong thinking every thought results in action it could be conscious action it could be you know subconscious right it need not be something that we are very conscious of but then it could be a reflex action even but it uh, it is because of a thought the origin is a thought and sometimes we we want to do certain things then we think plan we are intentional we reach out we act but sometimes it's just a spontaneous reflex response we didn't even think about it but in a split second it happened right but behind that split second response or action also is a thought right so if it's wrong thinking if it's a wrong pattern of thinking or a wrong attitude and mindset that is fixed on uh if it is wrong believing then definitely um the way we live our life and uh, how our emotions are our emotional well-being everything is definitely affected right just think about it if if one whole day if you sat if you just locked yourself indoors and you thought every negative thing possible about your life okay everything that could go wrong about your life maybe physically you know every negative thing if you think about it end of the day you know you're not going to feel cheerful right you're not going to feel you know like going out and doing something positive you you feel defeated and you don't want to do anything you just want to curl up and stay and you feeling so negative about everything it's because of a wrong thinking okay. so um we're going to look at how our thinking can change how our thinking can be impacted for the better because many times um i mean the 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 very um overpowering um you know thing that we we believe is that our thoughts cannot be controlled right or uh, our thoughts control us but um they they we, we can't have any influence over our thoughts oh well, that's that's the thing that, and many times that's our experience right and so we come to that conclusion that uh, yes our thoughts well they seem to have life of their own our mind seems to have its life of its own so i cannot influence it in any way i am always under uh, the influence of my thoughts and imaginations i can't seem to break free or have any kind of control over this whole thing right that's 
that's something that would that we you know, normally like believe in. But but that, the fact is that that can change, right? That can change um, if we believe right. If we if we believe that yes, you know, I can. God has given me the choice. I can choose to think on these lines. I can choose to dwell on these thoughts. I can choose not to. I just have to make up my mind. It's it's like how we make you know bed in the morning. You know, we got up. We just you know put everything right. We set it. We arrange the pillow, arrange the sheets, and everything. And we, it's it's something like that where we choose to. We, where we decide, where we make up our mind. Okay, so wrong thoughts lead to wrong emotions, and it either you know it captivates or captures, ensnares our soul, and it leads to wrong behavior. So thoughts, emotions, and uh, there's always a ensnaring and action. But the thing, a good thing is this. If there are good thoughts, result in good emotions, which lead to an ensnaring of the soul in a positive way, right? And leading to good behavior or right behavior, right? So uh, if it's a lie, then it leads to deception and wrong behavior. You know, for example, uh, a thought that God does not love me or people do not love me very soon could lead to lead to emotions and feelings of rejection. There's nobody there, nobody cares. Um, God does not care, neither do people. Right? We can come to that uh, conclusion, and uh, you know we can actually withdraw from people, withdraw from God, distance ourselves from God, and uh, and and do all that, and then we. And then when you look back, when you actually rewind the whole thing, why is a person like this? Why does this person come to this place in life? We most often we see, you know, this is what they believed in. Certain things happened in their lives, and they because of that they came to this conclusion, right? And it was in the mind. And they came to this conclusion. They made a choice. They made a decision. This is how things are, right? And uh, we see that Satan goes about either he goes about lying, either he goes about intimidating, causing fear, uh, accusing, and he also like uh, intimidates and uh, he accuses. He lies. Um, he also tempts. Right. He invites people uh, and and puts people or or causes uh, makes it a very strong argument for people to turn away from righteousness and to turn towards unrighteousness. Right? Makes a very strong case. It's like a very strong appeal, emotional appeal. And uh, he's the tempter. He's called the tempter. Right? He's called the father of lies. Uh, or the deceiver. So, you know, lying originates, you know, he's a source of all lies, he's the father of lies. Um, he's the deceiver. He's also the accuser, which means he accuses uh, people. There's a, you know, a lot of things that we accuse ourselves of, we accuse others of. Um, and, uh, you know, the whole thing of accusation comes from, from Satan. Right, and he also goes about tempting, and therefore he's called the the tempter. If you look at these uh, scriptures, you know, let's talk about that. You know, let's just let's look at a few. Well, it's it's important for us to understand where these things are coming from. So, if we would know, you know, Satan is the source of lies. So, why should I believe lies? Right? Why should I believe in a lie? Uh, or a statement that is that is opposite of the truth as stated in the word, right? As stated by God. So why should I, when I know the source, why should I actually even consider these things? Why should I even reason with these things? Right? Um, Revelation twelve and verse verse nine uh, and uh, I think yeah, 
uh, says so uh, great dragon was cast out the serpent of old called the devil and satan who deceives the whole world he was cast out to the earth and his angels were cast out with him so he deceives the whole world verse 10 talks about uh, now salvation and strength and kingdom of our god uh, and the power of his christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accuse them before our god day and night has been cast down so he's also called the accuser of the brethren right and uh, uh, if you look at uh, matthew chapter 4 and verse 3 uh, he's, he's he's the one who tempts matthew chapter 4 um let's look at that verse um Matthew 4 and verse 3. Okay. Um, now when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. So the like tempter immediately just goes about um, it goes about his job. It right? puts his skills to use. Right? And uh, here it's talking about the temptation of uh, where the Lord was tempted. Um, and Satan is called the tempter. Okay. So lies, deceptions, accusations, temptations come from Satan. Right. So these things, when we believe or when we buy in, right, when we even consider and reason and entertain these lies, entertain these accusations, we are actually put in a prison, right? Our actions, our thoughts uh, result in, you know, when we go through with those suggestions, uh, result in fear, result in some kind of deception, result in, uh, you know, imprison, we being imprisoned. Uh, it's not a physical prison, but an emotional prison, right? Where we are limited, we are unable to do what we are, been called to do right uh like the opposite of it is is this that it's so powerful that where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom there is liberty right and the the lord jesus says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free right so there is a setting free there is a liberty that comes from the spirit of life Whereas the opposing spirit, which is the lying and uh, deceptive spirit, causes imprisonment, causes, uh, ensnares people like, to live far below the potential. Okay, so wrong thinking. Okay, so we we will look at what we need to do, but then you know, right off, we can just say, okay, if I identify something in my life as a lie. We need to we need to understand. Am I believing a lie? It could be about ourselves. It could be about our circumstance. It be it could be about you know the uh, the our future. No, we need to take an inventory and say, um, you know, am I believing a lie? Am I believing a lie? Am I being fearful because of the lie? Am I being intimidated because of the lie? Am I accusing myself? Right. Um, okay. Uh, you know, we've confessed. Maybe we we fell. You know, we did wrong, and uh, maybe you've you know corrected yourself, and and still there is that voice of accusation that comes over and over again, even after you know, we 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 was probably set right things with God or with people. You know, there is this voice of accusation. So what what should you do? Right. What should we really do with that? What should we do with with lies which which keep coming? What should we what should we do with these things? Right? Should we entertain them? Should we reason with them? Should we think on them? Right? The answer is no. Right? Because these result in problems for us. Right? So uh, the best thing is not to do that. You know, practice recognizing and discarding these things okay so wrong thinking the second one which uh, affects 
uh, our lives, you know, uh, which causes problems. The second one is wrong speaking, wrong words. When we, you know, it could be either others speaking to us, wrong words, or wrong ideas they are declaring, uh, or it could be just ourselves, right? We speaking over our own lives, we speaking over our own, well, circumstances and situations. When we speak the wrong words we are not speaking as god would speak right we see things and we're not seeing it as god would see it we're not speaking it as god would speak over them then it results in a problem right because words have power because words are thoughts words are ideas words are communicating something and when we receive them it affects influences our thoughts right so uh, let's say you look at uh, Psalm 64 and verse 3. Okay, Who sharpen their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, bitter words. Uh, Proverbs 12 and verse 18, there is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword. Okay, There's one who speaks like the piercings of the sword, which means it's not a physical thing, but it's something that you hear that affects you. You know, like uh, like how a sword would actually impact us in the in the natural. Now these words are actually affecting us, either in our emotions or in our um, you know in our in our minds. Right? Um, uh, can you just give me a minute, please? Just one second. Um, sorry, once again, I have to. Okay, let's uh, let's continue. Okay, so words, right? Um, so we see that um, in the emotional realm, when we use words, it's like the piercing of a sword. Okay. Now the second part of that verse it says, "But the tongue of the wise promotes health." The tongue of the wise promotes them, just the opposite of um, the one who actually speaks like the piercings of the sword. Okay. Uh, another verse, Proverbs 16, verse 24. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb. Okay. What does it result in? Sweetness to the soul, though referring to the emotions and everything, um, and health to the bones. It it has a physical impact it has an impact in our you know in our body right it says pleasant words are like a honeycomb sweetness to the soul and health to the bones so the if people have spoken words over us okay and if they are wrong ideas or wrong words and we have received them we have believed we have received and we've just taken ownership internalize it uh, and it can it can result in wrong thinking it can result in wrong action right uh for example i i remember you know when i was uh when i was a child like uh when it came to let's say serving things and, and all that at home uh and we used to have these get-togethers and uh grandfather and uncles and as you get together, and I remember once I think I dropped, I dropped a glass, I dropped a few you know, plates or something, and, and broke them. And uh, so my grandfather always said, you know, hey, don't give it to this guy. This guy is butterfingers. Right? Don't give it to him. Uh, don't give anything for him to carry. Uh, he'll drop it. So any gathering, it was like that. Hey, this guy is a butterfinger. So butterfingers, so he will slip. He will not uh, 
so they they never you know gave me that responsibility of carrying things or putting things or especially when it came to things that are like fragile uh, breakable stuff so i uh, for some time i just believe that you know saying oh i, I butter fingers you know please don't give it to me I, I can't i can't carry it i don't want to you know i might drop it i might uh, break it for some time I, i just i just believe that and i don't know how that change happens and, and i just believe that hey this is not right right i can do it i can be careful with things it's just that i i just need to be careful with it i just need to consciously think of what i'm doing right i can't be preoccupied with something else so so i don't know how that shift happened but really i literally had to tell myself yeah i can handle responsibility so it it actually was resulting in a, in a lot of other things in life um where you know if if it if it was an areas of rest, area of responsibility which required you know it's a critical area of responsibility and then let's say if it it was handling money handling um you know accounting and things like that then uh, uh, i would pull back right i would uh, uh, hold back because i what if you know i did something wrong you know uh, butterfingers right? the, the thing would come over and over again because i had actually received those but so i had to really make a conscious effort and say no i i'm not that right um so people may have spoken words uh, and unfortunately you know it happens as we are growing up maybe in school uh, maybe with um, you know uh, uh, the kids whom we played with uh, they make uh, you know it it it's it, happen, it happens right we make fun of uh, we make fun of them uh, their you know physical appearance they make fun of us physical appearance and some of these things can actually stay with us for years like right, about our physical appearance and uh, we end up you know maybe it's about our complexion maybe it's about uh, you know our hair or our, you know nose or whatever right uh, i'm sure we we have called names right and the people have also called us names and and some of these things actually as if we are not careful uh if we have not let go of these things these actually would um you know kind of impact us emotionally right and emotionally let's say somebody has spoken something negative about our uh, physical appearance right so what happens is it as we grow over the years um we always have a lack of confidence uh, about our physical appearance right and we so we don't want to appear in public um because we lack confidence you know this could be i'm just taking an example right we could do this we could you know shrink away from appearing in public uh, and say you know I, i don't want to do that i don't want to meet this person i don't want to and the actual reason is maybe somebody just made fun saying um you are like this called you you know um xyz names you know maybe you're fat you're thin you're whatever and uh, we do not want to be called that again or we, our confidence has been shaken so you see words these are simple words but they were spoken uh, we received them and uh, it has stayed affecting our emotions affecting us uh, in all these ways right so again how do we uh, i mean how do we counteract it we're going to look at it in a detailed way but the basic thing is to counteract it with what would god say right uh someone someone said you know for every negative thing that has been spoken and received by us it takes 10 positive things to counteract it like 10 things to be spoken to destroy to really take away that negative thing that was absorbed by us so we need to counteract and uh, and say okay this is um this is not something that uh that's for me i'm i'm not going to accept this i'm going to reject it 
right? I'm not going to take it in. I'm just going to reject it. Okay. Um, okay. You'll have to just excuse me once once again. Just a minute, please. Um, I uh, really apologize for all these interruptions today. I'm really sorry. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, so we, we just need to um, recognize it and then, you know, overcome. It can be overcome, right? Um, so look into our own lives and see you know, what is it that's really bothering, troubling us, and uh, and something that's so repeatedly you know, over and over again, we've tried our best, but it's, you know, we've tried our best with, to change our behavior, and it's not helped, right? because behavior change is rooted to something else, and wrong thinking, be wrong speaking, right, and maybe we continue to speak, you know, that person has spoken, that person is not in the scene, moved away, but we are continuing to speak that over our lives. That happens. I am like this. I am butterfinger. I am a butterf I know. I I I cannot handle this. I I'm not. You, know, you can't trust me with things. I'm butterfinger. So I can tend to speak that long after that person has spoken and gone, and that many times that person also is is not part of your life anymore. Right? That person is maybe. Is, is is not alive even, but we we keep speaking that over us. Maybe it was someone whom we esteemed. Maybe someone someone who was close to us, right? Someone whom we respected. Uh, either ways, you know, we we esteemed those words or we tolerated those words, and it's, those words seem to have you know made an impact where we are speaking that over and over and over again over our lives. We need to stop that. Right, we need to stop that, and uh, the minute we stop that, we will see change. Right, the minute we stop that, and then um, not just leave a vacuum, but actually take the word of God, Lord, what are you saying, God? You know, I don't feel that now, but I'm going to speak that now, right? Uh, because many times we wait for emotions. I want to feel like I'm victorious before I can say I'm victorious. Right? I, I want to feel like yes, um, you know, the joy of the Lord. I feel the joy of the Lord before I can say the joy of the Lord is my strength. I, I, I want to feel that all that before I can act. Oh, I, I want to see it in my life before I can declare it, uh, before I can speak it. But it's actually the other way around, right? We speak it first because that's the truth, uh, irrespective of our feelings. Right? Emotions will come later. Emotions will change. Um, but we need to, you know, what is it? watch uh, what we are speaking over our lives. What is it that we are speaking over our lives? Okay, so then the third one where we are, where we could have problems, um, third reason is because of continued sin. Okay, continued, repetitive, uh, serious, uh, habitual sin. Okay, now it's dangerous, right? Because it opens the door for demonic influence, because we are con continually placing ourselves outside of you know God's protection, and right? we just we are, we are we are we are doing that, right? We are placing ourselves, and we are opening the door, right? And uh, we see that. Well, uh, scripture says uh, when, when we read in um, uh, James talks about that that you know he talks about just selfish ambition and uh, he says that every evil thing is there 
when it, when it, when these things are there or every evil thing is there so you know don't have it don't entertain it right uh, like uh, james chapter 3 and verse 14 right if you have bitter envy and self seeking in your heart do not boast and lie against the truth this wisdom does not descend from our above but is earthly sensual demonic uh, listen to verse 16 for where envy and self-seeking exist confusion and every evil thing are there so how did this confusion and every evil thing end up there what opened the door what gave the invitation and the permission to come right he's writing to the church the believers you know, who gave the permission how dare these things come in to our lives but it says here if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts or you know where there is envy and self-seeking confusion and every evil thing are there so these are works of the flesh so like this if there is continual deep-seated habitual sin we can be sure that yes you know that we are opening our doors for satan to step in uh, maybe this continued rage maybe there's continued you know uh, putting down of people uh, continued words uh, being spoken in anger every day it's a habitual thing uh, and other things things of the lust of the uh, lust of the flesh lust of the eyes and if it's a continual thing then we we see that yes we are actually hurting ourselves we are opening the door to the enemy okay um first peter 2 verse 11 first peter 2 and verse 11 um Peter writes and he says, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Okay. He's saying abstain from fleshly lusts. Okay. So appetites, desires, strong desires, fleshly lusts. You know, when we said flesh, we, we, we studied that. We said, okay, it, it, this refers to the appetite of the body uh, and uh, yeah it's an appetite of the body to actually satisfy it's an you know it's it's a drawing it's a desire to satisfy that appetite in in ways that god has not ordained okay so that's it's a negative thing when we say okay fleshly lust it's not our body has appetites and uh, it's not you know uh, now this desire is to this fleshly lust is to satisfy the desire in ways that god has not ordained okay so he's saying you know these fleshly lusts war against the soul okay so it's actually a war it's a conflict it's a fight and it's against ourselves against our thoughts against our imaginations our against the functioning the, the proper functioning of our mind right our thinking our analysis our reasoning our creativity everything it is actually against so so our thinking gets perverted our thinking gets crooked our imagination you know everything gets perverted and uh, it's the fleshly lust is capable of doing that it's a war it's a it's a conflict it's a serious thing right so that's why he says no don't don't tolerate abstain don't give in uh, don't be drawn into these things because it's a war against the soul your own soul right which means that if it's a war against our soul it's it's going to affect our body it's going to affect our emotions the whole thing right everything our actions our speech everything changes over time because of giving in to this fleshly lust okay um so yeah uh, so we see that so it it hurts us it hurts our soul it uh, it's an attack on our soul right and it also opens up our life to the demonic influence like just like we saw in james we can we can look at uh, you know ephesians uh, 426 as well like um ephesians 4 and verse um, 26 be angry and do not sin 
do not let the sun go down on your wrath nor give place to the devil okay that's verse 27 so nor give place meaning a foothold or a dwelling place for the devil don't give access to the devil right um so he's saying be angry so what causes what gives the access to the devil when we angry and we sin in anger right when that is not resolved saying don't let the sun go down on your wrath you know don't continue to stay angry uh, with that person because it, it's going to result in unforgiveness it's going to result in you being offended and carrying an offense and as a result of it a lot of things we are going to do a lot of things right speak a lot of things maybe take some action withdraw from people withdraw from people, all these things and give place to the enemy give place to the devil right give access to the devil so saying you know don't do this uh, be angry do not sin do not let that time pass right do not let that time be extended you deal with it don't let the sun go down on your path okay so um this continual deep-seated sin again affects us okay um, I, I guess that's all we have time for today so we'll stop here and we'll continue with other things that affect our soul which uh, cause damage to our soul um uh, a few more other things and then of course you can uh, there are additional readings um you can read um an apc book Bre breaking personal and generational bondages uh, you can read that as well that is helpful uh, we're going to look at a few more things okay in our next class okay so um so the thing is uh, whatever we have seen today you know uh, maybe we can um do an inventory and see okay what is it that i need to do i need to drop something of my life do i need to stop you know thinking these things uh do i want to what am i believing about myself or that maybe people have said people have spoken many years ago that i'm am i still believing that yeah. and just ask the holy spirit right and he will show you, know, you don't have to get paranoid <laughs> right. uh, it can be a very joyous thing right it can be a uh, 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 an exercise of shalom right because we are called to let the peace of god reign in our lives so just ask the lord have a conversation with the lord let him show certain things and then we act on it right and see these see our life change see our thoughts change and our, everything else that flows from it change as well right okay so uh, we'll stop here god bless you have a great weekend uh we'll meet again uh next week right? god bless Thank you, Pastor. Right. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.